The fast Fourier transform is one of the most beautiful algorithms that we know of. I will explain the algorithm in the following. Now we will derive an FFT algorithm. We start with the definition yk is the sum between 0 and n minus 1 of xj times omega n to the power j times k. And the trick is that we can separate this in even and odd terms. So we start with j equals 0, but we only take the x2j omega n to the power 2jk. And then, since we finish here at n minus 1, here we have to finish with n divided by 2 minus 1. So this is the even part. And then we do something similar for the odd part. x of 2j plus 1 omega n to the power 2j plus 1 times k. So this already looks a bit like a Fourier transform of half the size, but how can we, that's my question to you, how can we make this even more look like an FFT of size n over 2? Well, when you think about it, this factor of 2, we want to disappear. So if we use omega n squared, so omega n to the power minus 2 pi i divided by n squared equals So this factor of 2 becomes, it moves here, then you see that we can write this as omega of n divided by 2, which is nice because then we get yk equals the sum j equals 0 to n minus n over 2 minus 1 x2j omega n over 2 to the power jk. And this really looks like a Fourier transform of size n over 2 of the even components plus the sum j equals 0 to n over 2 minus 1 x2j plus 1 omega n to the power jk, and the term 1 times k, uh, omega n to the power k, we, it doesn't depend on j, so we can move it here. So we write here, omega n to the power k. And this, then we call yk the even one, and this we call yk the odd one. So we have written our, our uh, Fourier transformation as a sum of an even and omega n times an odd term. So that's nice. So we can write it uh, that way. And this holds for 0 less than k less than n. But of course, if we compute an FFT of size n over 2 of the even and odd parts, then we can use this only for the ones between 0 and n over 2. If we want to find, if we want to 
to use the k for larger uh, k larger than or equal to n over 2, we write k equals k prime plus n over 2 with 0 less than k prime less than n over 2. And then if we substitute this into this formula, then we get the sum of j equals 0 to n over 2 minus 1, x to j, omega n over 2, to the power, and now instead of the k, we get j times k prime plus n over 2, plus omega n to the power k, which is k prime plus n over 2, and then the sum omega n over 2 to the power j k prime plus n over 2. Okay, so this is for uh, k prime between 0 and n over 2. Now if we look at this, then we see omega n over 2 to the power n over 2 is just 1. It's the full circle that we've seen before. So this equals omega n over 2 to the power k prime. And here we have the same. So this also equals omega n over 2 to the power j k prime. I forgot the j here, so we put it here. And what else? This it, omega n to the power n over 2, that's half a circle. That's a minus 1. So this is a minus omega n to the power k prime. And then the conclusion that we have is that we can drop the primes. If we drop it, drop it everywhere, then we just write y k plus n over 2 equals the sum of j equals 0 to n over 2 minus 1, x to j omega n over 2 j k plus omega n. Ah, and here we see it's not a plus, it's a minus. It's a minus omega n to the power k, the sum x to j plus 1, omega n over 2 to the power j k. So we see that here, this term, we have computed already. This term we've also computed already. The 4 factor is the same, only this plus became a minus. And that's why we don't have to compute these sums again. We gain, we, uh, we save computations, and the only difference is that instead of adding them here, we subtract them here. As we've just seen, we pick out the even components of a vector, the odd components, and we perform a Fourier transform of half the size on both of these parts. And then we do the same again on the smaller parts until at the end we get to a part that uh, a vector that has length one and we don't have to do anything basically. So in a formulation of the algorithm, we can uh, write the fast Fourier transform of a vector x of length n as follows. If 
n is an even number, then we do a sequence of steps. If n becomes odd at some point, then we need to do the regular discrete Fourier transform. So the first thing we do is we pick out the even components. x starts at 0, then 2, 4, etc. Uh, so we see that we start at 0, we have a step size of 2, and we end when we reach n minus 1. We do something similar for the odd components. We have x, uh, xe, meaning the, uh, the, we have xe and xo, the odd part is xo, and we get that by starting at 1, and then with the same step size of 2, we go on until we get to n minus 1. So we pick out 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. Now, on these two parts, we perform an f of t of length n over 2. Then we combine the results. We do that in a loop, because each time we take the kth component of y e, the e the, of y o, the odd part, multiply it by omega n to the power k, and then we call this number tau, and we either add or subtract it from the even component y k of e, with a superscript e. So this is the, the whole algorithm, and you see that it is recursive because it calls itself with a smaller size. So what is the cost of this algorithm? The cost of adding two complex numbers, a plus bi and c plus di, is just two real flops, because we add a and c, and we add b and d. And the other plus that you see is just a notational device, because we keep the real and the imaginary parts of our complex numbers separate. Then a complex multiplication costs a little bit more, because we have four products, AC, BD, AD, and BC, that we have to compute, so real, uh, real flops, four real flops. And then we also need to perform a subtraction and an addition. So altogether, this is six flops, six real flops that we perform. And with this, we can find the number of real flops that our total algorithm has. So in the inner loop, we need to add tau, subtract tau, and also we need to multiply omega n to the power k with a number giving tau. So this is altogether a multiplication, four flops, and an addition, and ah, we, we get four flops from the addition and the subtra subtraction, and six flops from the multiplication, altogether ten flops. And how often do we perform this? Well, we have a loop which runs n over two iterations, each ten flops, so altogether five n flops in the loop. And let's not forget, we also have to perform two FFTs of a smaller size, of size n over 2. And this gives the formula Tn equals 2 times Tn over 2 plus 5n. And of course, we can again use this formula to get for smaller sizes that the Tn equals 4 times T of n over 4, plus 2 times this 5n. And every time we double the, or we halve the size, we get uh, a similar expression. We, we double the first coefficient, and altogether at the end, after log n steps, we get to n times the time of a Fourier transform of length 1, which is just 1. Uh, and we get log n times 5n. Actually, the t1 is 0 because we just have a copying operations, so we can just ignore that. Altogether, 
the cost is 5n log n. This is a lot faster than the cost of 8n squared that we have for the discrete Fourier transform, just a straightforward calculation. So the history of the fast Fourier transform, it actually was already discovered by Gauss, who else, in 1805. And it was rediscovered by Danielson and Langsos in 1942. But it really became famous and it is often attributed to Cooley and Tukey, who worked at IBM uh, in 1965 when they published their results and they also made the, the, the code uh, open source. Uh, it became used in many different applications immediately. So the FFT, in summary, is the computational workhorse in many applications. Applications from image processing, signal processing, but also in medicine. Modern medicine wouldn't be possible without the fast Fourier transform. The time it takes to perform a Fourier transform of length n is 5n log n. And the log is the log on the basis of 2. And the algorithm in the form that we derived it here is a recursive fast Fourier transform algorithm because it calls itself. Final question to you. The algorithm that we have derived here is a radix 2 algorithm because it splits the vector into two parts. Can you derive a radix 4 algorithm, determine its cost. And here you can assume that negations and complex conjugations are for free because they basically flip only a bit in the uh, stored data.